So what's ground cover? Um, ground cover is pretty much the material that's covering the ground. It is um, material that, that um, basically uh, stops the impact or reduces the impact of that energy of that raindrop falling on that bare ground. And so it can be the, the material that's already there, the plants that are already there, but also the litter, which is the material that's um, unattached to the, um, to the plant itself. So it reduces the impact of that, that raindrop hitting that bare ground. And so you know, why are we interested in ground cover? Ground cover is important for sustainability, but also for productivity as well. And so what we know from, um, from, from a lot of research work is that ground cover can keep our ground um, where it is. It also stops the, um, the ground um, the, or the soil moving across the landscape in things like runoff. And um, it also acts as a mulch um, and it acts as a mulch so that we keep the moisture where it is because we want those plants to grow, especially when we get um, a little bit of rain, but you know, follow up rain as well. So we know that most of our soil nutrients and our soil activity is in that top 10 centimetres of the soil, um, in that top soil. And if we lose, say, one millimetre of, of soil, um, we can lose nutrients. We lose um, ability for soil biology to, to function. And um, you know, one millimetre of soil across a hectare, we can lose seven and a half to 10 tonnes of soil across our landscape. So we really want to keep our soil where it is um, and the function of that soil where it is as well. Um, also, we don't want bare ground because when it does rain, um, it means bare ground. What, what do we know with bare ground is that some of the weeds love that space to get going and they love that bare ground to, to germinate and get going quickly and um, become a problem in, in the future. What can we do um, to protect our ground, um, our, our ground cover, our plants? Um, we know that, that good ground cover also um, um, and litter helps um, protect our plants from extremes of heat but also from extremes of cold as well. Um, but it also keeps those plants, um, you know, having a little bit of um, leaf material so when it does rain those plants um, get going again as well. Some of the things we can do is move our animals off those paddocks, that, especially those lighter soils um, and especially those soils that have a bit of slope to them as well. We can talk about moving animals, confining animals, um, thinking about sacrifice paddocks or feeding um, them in certain areas. Um, but I suppose the first thing we need to think about is what percentage of ground cover you know, do we start talking about moving animals off? So we often talk about 70% um, is a benchmark we hear um, about ground cover in the, in the industry. And 70% um, ground cover is certainly very important, but there are some parts of the landscape that we actually would like even more than 70% ground cover. And those areas being um, high slope areas, um, steep areas, but also riparian areas as well. Um, so there's areas in our landscape that we probably should be aiming for a little bit higher than 70%. Um, ground cover. What um, is happening in those areas that we're lucky enough to get a little bit of rain is that we've seen a bit of greening up of, of our pastures and as we're traveling around you can see the short green pick um, that's kind of coming back and that short green pick um, our soil temperature is actually quite warm at the moment so we're seeing a little bit of growth that's occurring um, and that warmth actually means that we do actually have a few plants such as our tropicals grasses such as um, Paspalum and red grass, for example, will actually put out a bit of green leaf. Um, they may go up to, to seed head, but they will put out a bit of green leaf for us because that soil temperature is still there and a bit of soil moisture. We'll see some other grasses that um, may even germinate, um, such as liver seed grass and barnyard grass. Um, things like cooch, um, kaiku will respond to, to a little bit of soil moisture and a bit of soil temperature as well. Um, we'll also see some of our temperate grasses um, put out a little bit of green leaf and as we're travelling around the last few days we've seen um, things like fescues and, and coxfoots put out a little bit of green leaf. Um, which is good but it's the follow up rain that's really really important. The other thing we'll see is a lot of, because there's a bit of bare ground, a lot of, um, of weeds will germinate. Um, and we'll see some of the, the nuisance weeds germinate and become a little bit of a problem um, from now on. We'll also see um, subclover, and we have seen subclover germinate in the last couple of days, um, which, is, which is good. However, however, what we need is that follow-up rain 
um, to continue that growth of that subclover. And subclover very important as a winter annual to give us that good crude protein, that good amount of um, quality for our pastures, fix a bit of nitrogen for our pastures um, over the, the winter months. So what we need now is, is another lot of rainfall. Um, for those areas that missed out on the rainfall in February, we actually need you know, a kickstart as well. But remember the soil moisture in our soil profile is very, very dry and we need a fair bit of, of moisture um, to top it up and to keep things growing as well. So one of the things that we'll, we'll see in the, um, the next month or so is some unusual things that might germinate that we don't know what it might be. Um, so very important to get some of those things identified, um, especially if they've gone to seed head or if they're going up to, to flower, that, to get those things identified to, to make sure that they become a problem and you don't look around in a few months time and realise that they're all through the paddocks and it's going to cost you a lot of money to, to do something about them. So certainly um, going out and assessing your pastures, very important, assessing um, what's coming up um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get a bit more um, follow up rain and for those areas that haven't had rain that we actually do get substantial rain and that follow up rain to, to help things move along and get a bit of growth before the the, the cold seasons are upon us and those frosts are upon us.